Hi there and welcome to another live chapter reading for Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Today I'll be reading Everyday Enchantments by Maria de Blasi. Enchantment, a spell wrapped in a noun, three syllables, one state of being. To live with enchantment is to see beyond the bricks and mortar that make up your home and into the magic infused within its frame. It is made up of stories and dried bay leaves and dreams whispered into the heads of dandelions, of bare feet on carpeted floors and the smell of burning sage. Crystals, amethyst, citrine, amazonite, smoky quartz, winding in and around your books, all the better to magnify their magic. It is to peel back the layers of your day to day and search for that elusive energy that finds its way up your spine then outward into your life. Let the snake at your base wriggle free of its coil to climb upon your shoulder blades and across your open back. There is no room for tightly stacked discs here, just a taste of joy when the sun licks your skin. You might find it at the bottom of an empty teacup, your future written in soggy leaves or in the whisper of trees their leaves rustling and murmuring secrets only they can understand. Sometimes they are kind enough to translate for you, if you listen long enough, if you shower their roots with distilled love songs and feed them to the black earth from your compost. It's there too when you run your tongue along the grooves and ridges of a well-loved sentence. It's everywhere, even in the spaces you think have lost hope, like the junk drawer where you keep your faded dreams, stray screws and half-forgotten heartbreaks, along with wine corks and a few rubber bands. They're not lost, just resting like seeds in the earth before they are ready to break open. That is the first syllable. The second is to learn from enchantment, to listen to Coyote's call when he plays his tricks. Coyote loves his tricks, and you should too. What delicious messages wrapped in matted fur and a lolling tongue. All he wants is for you to take that leap of faith when only you can see the soft earth on the other side of the cliff. Don't you know that you have wings? They are just rusty from disuse. Just listen to Coyote's long-winded stories. He does so admire himself. And watch the flick of his tail. All he asks is for you to trust him. Even if you can't be trusted, his lesson is real. Hard as onyx in your palm. Ephemeral as the desert rain that you feel in your bones when all you see is a cloudless sky. No weatherman can ever map the storms and sunshine working their way across your body. Coyote has no room for logic, just the reason in his unreason, just those perfect coincidences set in motion by the padding of his paws. You are raw power, he says, a spark of the universe set in motion. And you must trust this power that is you, that is the earth, that is the beating of your heart, a rhythmic tattoo forever pounding out your path, however many times you try to stray from it. All enchantment asks is that you absorb the wisdom of the moon and the stars and the prophesying of the seeds buried deep down in the dirt. Coyote is there to make sure you listen, even when the rest of the world prefers your ears stopped with cotton and your heart beating as slow as melting snow in winter. And the third syllable, to conjure. Here you weave your spell with vowels and consonants and beeswax candles. You seal them with pure starlight and a handful of chamomile. Then you burn away the dry brush and the brittle ideas that don't hold up against the moonlight. There is no room here for literal things, or the people who think them. Not if you want to create, not if you want to believe that the most important part of your everyday occurs in the moments other can too, others can too easily overlook. Seldom can you find a person strong enough to break the stillness or wade into the bottomless waters of imagination. You make your life here, in the infinite potential of seconds and minutes and hours, unfurling into vines and roots. Because when you are looking for everyday enchantment, it finds you, always. And if you let it, it will settle inside your skin and feed your soul. With dreams grown ripe under the sun's caress, it drops you deep down into the rich earth and forgotten caves buried beneath heartbeats. Places that many are too afraid to venture inside. For how can you absorb the marvellous if you do not recognise it, reflected in yourself? Feel it settle in your bones like so much calcium. That's enchantment. A three-syllable spell wrapped in a noun, planted in the earth and nourished with moonlight. Let the roots stretch to the underworld, 
and the leaves unfurl towards the heavens. Walk across a star ghost and star kissed bridge made of hollyhock seeds and strong will. There is your passage into the unseen universe. On double yolks. The skillet is hot. Hot as the bluegrass playing in the background. Hot as the black lightning coffee in your cup. Today is the day for a bold breakfast. You shake off your usual weekday oatmeal in favour of eggs over easy, chorizo and toast. A small town desert, desert dinner breakfast made all the better for coming from your kitchen. You could get drunk on the scent of burning cedar in the air. That fireplace smell, more evidence than anything that summer has faded into fall. Though the trees have not yet turned, their green leans to flames. There is an air of abundance to your morning, a welcome feeling after the exhaustion that seems to have settled in your bones with the changing of the seasons and the week's intense demands on your time and energy. Sometimes you feel as if dusty souls want to suck away your light, or at the very least pile their debris upon you. Since to them you seem so weightless, they don't know the work it takes to keep the corners of your mind free from grime and your schedule clean of mindless busy. But forget all that. Today is a day for a hearty breakfast and devotion to your craft. You will fill yourself up with words and coffee to assuage the thinness that has crept into your soul, as if you are an empty cupboard, save for a few crumbs. You crack an egg over the sizzling pan with these thoughts heavy in your head, despite your attempts to fill your mind with the sunshine that saturates your home. And there it is, a fat golden double yolk. The orbs sit piled atop one another as if caught kissing. You marvel at how so much yolk could fit into such a little eggshell. The broken pieces in your hand hardly seem capable of cradling such gold. They appear too fragile and yet burst more than others thought they could hold. You can't tell where one yolk ends and the other begins. You are mystified by this anomaly. You watch your eggs cook and the sly voice inside your head, the one who loves a good story, the one who can't resist the law of superstition, coyly whispers that double yolks are good luck, harbingers of double the grace, the plenty, and the fortune. These are the stories of old wives, crones and witches that you are half tempted to believe, if only because these fat yolks nestled together in front of you seem nothing short of magic themselves. Another part of you, the one descended from those old crones, healers and potential witches, knows it is, would be foolish to ignore such a gift. And it is a gift, a reminder. You flip your eggs and decide to let your fanciful imagine run, imagination run away with you feeling the tension loosen from your shoulders as you do. Yes, you commit to the idea. Double yolks are good luck. All at once you are grateful for this message, this little sign that you are not a bare cupboard after all. But a fully stocked larder. If it is ever appropriate to compare yourself to food storage, no matter. You are abundance, you are luck, you are double the fortune. Hard week be damned. On synchronicity. It is the moment between thinking of moving in one direction. Perhaps I will rekindle that relationship after all. And then being stopped by a red light at the crosswalk. Don't go down that road. In truth, you know how it will end, although you can't help toying with the idea. It is the ladybug that lands on your porch as you turn your thoughts to a new piece of writing. Yes, it says, yes. You are grateful for that flash of insight, helping you hone your creative path that has long since diverged from the mainstream. Grateful for your fluency in a language too few know how to speak. Your day is nothing without this never-ending conversation between yourself and the universe, or the clap of thunder that punctuates your off-the-cuff revelations. You cannot speak your truth, without lightning striking both in your blood and in your sky. It is terrifying consciousness, pure insight, and sometimes it's just a song that blares from your car radio when the key ignition, when you key the ignition. There's no going back, the lyrics roll out. Just as you marvel at how your life is a series of forward moving steps, though it sometimes feels like more of a cha-cha-cha. The clock ticking in the middle of the night, its hands pushing you out of sleep with their hushed staccato, asks you what is worth your time, and sometimes 
why you continue to waste it on unimportant things. You cannot hide in the darkness. It only serves to illuminate what matters, like the clicking clock, a mechanical heartbeat resounding from a relic that you know doesn't work in the light of day. There are no plugs or batteries to operate it, and you have long since given up winding it. But in the moonlight it still ticks, as if charged by electric dreams. It is everywhere and nowhere, a wisp of silk that guides you if you know how to unravel the spool. A collection of signs, like cards in a tarot deck, meant only for your eyes, understood only by your gut. You allow this skill to blossom inside you, the ability to translate these letters from the universe that will only reach you if you leave your mailbox open. Ask your questions without censor or clear reason. Just be ready for the answers. Synchronicity is the roadrunner that greets you one morning as you head to your office. You pause to enjoy the beautiful morning, the way the mint green of the trees highlights the rich purple of the mountains, the turquoise sky, a perfect backdrop. A thought flicks through your brain, an old worn thought that has outlived its welcome. It has muscled its way in nonetheless, no doubt from the back door you left open from overwork the day before. It is a thought from a past self, a small shadow of a doubt on an otherwise gorgeous day, a tiny little question mark that almost suffocates your latest pop of inspiration. And then the roadrunner crosses your path. It darts past you from bush to rock to dry bush as you lock your car, confusing evil spirits by its X-shaped feet leaving them unable to tell in which direction you are moving, casting away darkness and welcoming light. All is well, it says. Follow the inspiration and all is well. No darkness can find you while you cultivate the light. So you turn from that shadowy thought. It is irrelevant. And wrap your inspiration around you like a leather coat, protecting you from the inconstant weather of your thoughts, too often tainted by what you absorb from others. These are not your feelings, you realise, not your burden, nor your path to untangle. You must go beyond the white noise and recognise yourself in the early morning hush and quick dance of this long-tailed bird. You thank the roadrunner for his visit. You thank the universe for sending this message. And you thank yourself for listening. And thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this reading. And if you want to read more, go check out the book. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.